guys and welcome back to the pod. So today we have a super special guest. Alexa is joining us and we're going to be talking all about food, healthy eating, baking and tips for y'all. So Alexa, you can introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Alexa. Um, I'm 24 years old. I'm from Massachusetts, but I live in New York right now. Um, yeah, so I started my whole platform basically on the basis of like healthy eating. I have been obsessed with food since I was little. It's just like everything in my life. And through, you know, the usual twists and turns of being a teenager and getting uh, immersed into diet culture at a very young age, I started shifting my focus on food in a healthier way all around to include more balance and then obviously with an emphasis on desserts. So I make really healthy um, plant-based mostly desserts um, that are really easy, convenient, and just like really fun recreations from our childhood, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it's kind of my side hustle right now. I also work for a media agency, but I am obsessed with all things food and I'm so happy to be here talking today. So why did you decide to start your social media accounts? Would you say it was just solely because you obviously loved food or when you were younger, did you ever like struggle with food? Like what was the motivation behind starting your accounts? Yeah. So actually for the past, so while I was in college, um, I started to get into modeling pretty much full time. So I was doing both school and modeling and I ended up doing a lot of traveling. And once I started doing modeling, you know, more seriously, I got definitely immersed into the diet culture, sort of like measurement body focused lifestyle. And it was a huge burden on me because I grew up not really caring so much about what I ate. It wasn't a main focus. I loved food so much. I grew up around amazing food. I'm Italian and Portuguese. And it was like very centered as a part of my family, as it is for most people. Um, but I never really thought about food that much, you know. And then once I started to get into the whole modeling thing and understanding ways to change my body, um, it sort of shifted into an obsession with the foods I was eating. You know, everything needed to be really clean and healthy and sugar-free, dairy-free, you know, that's just like obsession. And I know that a lot of young girls especially struggle with that, especially through social media. So I took to social media after, you know, a couple of years in the modeling industry, and I was just really fed up with the way I was treated and the way I was treating myself and perceiving food. And that's when I started to like, sort of use my page as like a way to be creative and look at food as more of like a fun thing, you know, creating different recipes, experimenting with different things, and also the accountability to be in a, a different climate, even though it's still social media you know, it's a totally different ball game. Like I look at my different accounts on social media and my food one is like, it's just such a warm environment and it's amazing recipes, amazing people. And that was sort of like the start of like, you know, my big passion project, which is the balanced fight. And I know I've seen, so this is kind of about modeling. I feel like there's a lot of things going around where people say like mo how models are treated and I saw this one video I want to ask if you've had this experience or not that it's true but if you've experienced this it was a girl who was a model and she was saying how the models weren't allowed to eat on set and how there was a sign that said like food is only for like the people working like not for the models have you experienced something similar to that yeah, absolutely. I know exactly what video you're talking about. And of course, it's different. Every model's experience, I will say, is completely different. But we've all stumbled upon this situation. And especially working in international climates, um, it, it was a struggle. Um, you know, it's just not the center. It's like they'd rather get through the next five shots and work through lunch than, you know, spend the time to give you that break. So like, it's really counterproductive because if you don't have energy and you're taking pictures, you're not going to look the best. But I think that from a money viewpoint, they book the studio for so much time. They don't want to give you lunch. They don't want to pay for lunch. Yeah. It definitely comes up. I remember like every time I travel or anything, just always have my go bag of snacks, like almonds, granola bars, everything, because it's really not the the top priority of the client, the photographer, the stylist, it's very, very common, especially for like high stakes situations like an editorial photo shoot or a runway show. It's just not a top priority. Dang. I mean, obviously, yeah. I've never had that experience, but I just yeah. saw that and I didn't know if that was true because I mean, I could assume, but it's just different hearing it from someone who's had that actual experience. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty insane now that I look back at it. Imagine somebody yeah. just like neglecting your basic needs as a human. <laughs> um, but honestly, like once I started my food page, it was like a great way to like see food in a different way, but it was my escape route. I was like, I'm out. Like I every day that I was like seeing really uplifting content and more content focused on me eating more and mm-hmm. like feeling my body and feeling good in a in a way outside of the way that my body looked I was like just more drawn away from the industry I was like I could not feel more like now looking back at it I could not feel more separate from it and it's like a nice reflection because I know that at that point is like I'm it is a really hard industry to get out of because it is you know there's always something really tantalizing like you can make more money you can be on the cover of this you can do that but you know once you really are out like you feel so much better at least for me I'm like okay I really don't want anything to do with it anymore so are you done with modeling now you're no longer doing it yeah I'm pretty much done um I do have some agencies that keep in touch with me but you know I I work a full-time job too and then also working on like my food stuff and my TikTok and my Instagram is in part a a full-time job at this point I feel you (laughs) yeah it's I mean it's crazy social media is like so booming and it's just one of the most like it's the industry that is just going to shape us all I think and once you're in it you're really in it and it can I mean you know how it is it can just evolve into so many different things and it can be really time consuming for sure and speaking about social media would you say that the reaction from your page has been overall positive because I know I saw I was on Instagram this morning and I saw your Mm -hmm. story about some reactions you were getting (laughs) from videos is that normal or is it usually positive Honestly, on Instagram, I usually get nothing but like just positive energy from everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody's uplifting. I have friends on there who check in with me every single day. How are you doing? How's work? Aww. Like we know each other very well. And then you go to TikTok and it is just like yeah. a whole different <laughs> ballgame. I, I'm i thrown. Yesterday, I posted a two ingredient bagel recipe, which is a recipe that has been circulating for a very long time. I did not invent this recipe. It is not, you know, it's been going around, you know. And I posted it. And of course, you never know what's going to happen on TikTok. But it, you know, it did definitely blow up a little bit. And I was like, uh oh, because I knew people were going to come for me. People were saying things like just really harsh things. These were horrible. I tried them. They didn't work. Like people get really personal with it. Like they make everything, you know, really, it's like a personal attack. And then I'm like, this is all over a bagel, which is kind of funny to me, because I know that this is very common on specifically food and recipe TikToks, because they don't feel as bad saying something because they're like, oh, it's just food. I can I can put my two cents in. I can leave a mean comment. Like, yeah. And they don't think that the person on the receiving end is really affected because it's just their food. But I'm like, okay, I put my energy into it. I put my time into it. It's really hard sometimes to not internalize it. But I do think that over time, it's allowed me to, ve- to develop a really thick skin. I'm like, this is about my food. Like, if you don't like it, you can leave. Like, that's fine. And then on the opposite end, it's like I post sometimes like body image and eating disorder recovery content and like important diet culture debunking myths. And people who are there for my recipes are like, why are you posting this stuff? Like they don't like how there's two different platforms going on, which is a little bit aggravating to me because I don't like when people will put you in a box. I think that as having any platform, if you want to speak about something that can help people in any way and that is constructive, you should do it and you should be allowed to do it without like feeling like you're not fitting into someone's box. Also, I would say it's not like you're talking about two totally different things. No, they're very related. Yeah, yeah. they're intertwined. And especially mm-hmm. if it's like your relationship with food or spreading awareness about eating disorders, mm-hmm. modeling, whatever, all of the things I would say it's related. Yeah. But I mean, it absolutely is. Knows? I mean, it's like I will post something and girls will message me all the time and be like, thank you so much. And then I'm like, OK, even if some people don't want this content on their for you page or for whatever reason it is, that's one person. I think about the other person on the opposite end that maybe needed to see a video like that this morning, you know, like something like that. And I think that's we just have to focus on like the positive messages over the negative messages. Yeah. So now I want to kind of transition to talking about you when you were younger So obviously at the beginning, you said you loved food, you loved all that. Would you say that was because like how you were brought up with your family? Because I know you said you were Italian and Portuguese. Was like food a big center of your family life or was it just something you were interested in? 
Yeah, it was a huge center of it. I mean, today is Father's Day and I'm going to my aunt's house and I just know that there's going to be a full spread of everything <laughs> I want. Um, but yeah, it's it's a big part of it. I grew up with my mom making, you know, homemade pasta and like fun Italian foods, tiramisu, stuff like that. And then my dad and making, you know, Portuguese dishes like baklava, not baklava, bacalhau, um, like pastage de natas. They're like Portuguese custards. Like I grew up on both sides and I got to dabble in a lot of different cultures and stuff like that and then that made me appreciate traveling and experiencing different cultural foods like I didn't really like when my parents used to send me to the playground with my little lunchbox it always had like really weird foods and I remember the kids would be like what are you eating and like because they'd be eating their lunchables which there's nothing wrong with that but I would be like that weird kid eating these weird like fish dishes (laughs) at the playground and I think that that honestly shifted my perspective to be way more open to experiencing different foods. And like when I started traveling in high school and in college and throughout modeling, I was like, I want to try everything. I want to try all like nothing would be sort of like off limits. So when I started to get into like the whole diet culture thing, it changed that relationship so much because I was like, all of a sudden, everything's off limits. There's things that I can't eat. And then there's things that are okay, but like only in moderation, like that sort of thing. So it takes away from like the the like romantic aspect of food. Like you don't really get to enjoy things. You don't have like that cultural component anymore that maybe you had when you were really innocent as a kid and you just saw food as food and you ate it and that was it. Nothing happened, you know? Mm-hmm. But now I think a lot of us can relate to feeling so separate sometimes from the person that we were as children just enjoying food and having things without thinking about them now it's like we're very influenced by social media and diet culture and just all these things we're seeing online it's really hard to see food the same so I think I've seen a lot of content on TikTok where people really wish that they could go back to that place of being a little kid and having that innocence and that very just normal relationship with food but I think you know it's it's hard to ever get back to that place, but I just do really like miss that like initial connection with food and trying new things. But yeah, I did have like a very unique and and fun relationship with food growing up for sure. And would you say, I mean, obviously your Instagram account has improved your relationship with food, but when you first started out, were you getting to a point where you were like, I can't do this anymore. My relationship with food is toxic or was it just like, oh, I'm going to do this for fun. Yeah. So when I first started, I will say this, I definitely did not have a healthy relationship with food. And I felt like I was living like sort of a double life, like, uh, you know, on one end, just posting these pictures of food. And then on the other end, I would be eating it and then struggling with it after. And I felt like it was kind of a lie. So at that point, I was like, you're either not going to do this, or you're going to do it. And you're going to hold yourself accountable. And you're going to see this as a way to be like, I'm going to make this food, I'm going to enjoy it and be as transparent as possible with my audience. And at that time, my platform was very small. I wasn't like really looking to speak a lot to anything. Um, And then over quarantine, I, you know, didn't have a job or anything. I was just like home. I was in Greece for work and then I came home and I was at my parents and I was like, at that point, I was like, I really want to work on my relationship with food. I started getting help. And that's when I was like, I really just want to be very transparent on this page. And I started posting some of my struggles and some infographics and some stuff about eating disorder recovery and then also diet culture, body image, social media. And then those started to like get a lot of traction and sort of growing that platform in that way. And that was like really amazing to me too, because I was like, wow, a lot. I couldn't believe how many people could relate to this content Mm -hmm. because it's such a spectrum, your relationship with food. It it can fall into so many different categories and just, just so many different boxes that it's like, I think everybody can relate in some way, shape or form. So that was how I started to get into that sort of relationship on my food page. And now I'm at the point where I, I want to be as transparent as possible. I never want to be this person who is preaching one thing on Instagram and then just like going through it behind closed doors, you know, which I think is very, very common in social media. And that's also an important point is like, you never really know what somebody's going through outside of social media. Like it is literally, you are viewing everything through a screen, everything. And I think that we have to take a step back from that for a second and be like, there is no way that I could know what this person is going through once she puts her phone down and steps away, you know? 
Yeah, I think that's a really important point. And I feel like I talk about that on my podcast all the time, that you never know what someone's going through. And especially with social media, when you see all your friends posting about going to the beach, you don't know like what what else they're doing. That's one picture. That's one Snapchat or or seeing people online famous celebrities and they have those gummies that are, will yeah. make you skinny mm-hmm. and you're like mm-hmm. oh they look good that's what yeah. they did and mm-hmm. i mean obviously logically i'm thinking that makes no sense but i'm like yeah but if they did it <laughs> but if they do it it must work yeah i know it's honestly i i like to think back to it and be like this just like take a step back and look at it from like they're being paid you know they a lot of influencers don't really care. It's like they will do it and they will post it and they don't really care what's happening on the other end. They just don't think it's making maybe as big of a wave as it is, but it can be super impactful. I totally agree. And since you've been saying like how you struggled with food, I know a lot of people now are kind of at that stage. They're teenagers. They don't really know what to do. What would you say was the most helpful thing you did to improve your relationship with food? And like, do you have any tips for someone who's also struggling? Yeah, I mean, a lot. (laughs) So when I first started, my biggest issue was the comparison game, which I think is so, it's very centered, especially around food. I cannot emphasize this enough, how just extremely different we all are. It's insane. Like we don't all look alike at all. Nobody like is looking the same. Therefore, like you have to take that same message and apply it to your body and be like, What's going on inside of my body, how my body is digesting and processing this food is so different from every single person. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing that I'm seeing right now are these what I eat in a day is on TikTok and Instagram. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So I have (laughs) words about these and people know that about me because I feel like I've sort of opened a can of worms. There's a lot of debate about it, whether these are helpful or not. I will say that in some regards, I'll see a very nice what I eat in a day that's obviously showing a lot of food you know, people are eating a lot. And I understand, you know, from a restrictive perspective that that can be very helpful to people going through recovery or having a hard time eating. But at the same time, even if you're seeing somebody eat more, you are comparing to them, you know, same way as if you were seeing somebody eat less, you're still playing the comparison game. And at that point, you are completely separating yourself from your body. You're like, okay, I have to eat the way they're eating or whatever it's it's like the human condition you're always going to compare to somebody else no like it it's just so normal to do that and then on the other end I'll see these videos and I know that everybody has seen these and it is just the most annoying thing ever in my opinion is when you open the TikTok page whatever and you just see a what I eat in a day in the opening shot is them flexing their bodies so like it's a toned body it's a thin body it's like a way that they're saying this is what I eat in a day and this is what I look like because this is what I eat in a day and at what point like anybody's gonna see that and be like okay I guess like if I eat that way I'll look that way and like my biggest tip is to just like please 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 ignore that voice because it is just so like it is we could all eat and work out and do everything the same and we would still look different because we are different people we have different metabolic rates we have different bodies different everything everything is completely different genetics like it's just such a bigger picture than I think we're seeing through a screen and I think that we all just have to take a step back and be like I am myself and I am just not related to anybody else through their diet, through their lifestyle, their workout routine. Like I, you just have to focus on yourself. I know that that is easier said than done. But my biggest tip is if you see something that you find very difficult to cope with after and might be causing you to compare your diet to somebody else, if it's on TikTok, press the not interested button, mute an account on Instagram, like just separate yourself from it. Because honestly, out of sight, out of mind, that's how I operate. If I don't see it, I don't really think about it as much. And that is like the when I started my whole like shift in my perspective with food, my biggest thing is I needed to just like shut out everything that was harmful towards, you know, getting better and working on this relationship. And I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, I think that's really good, too. And I feel like going back to creators in general, I don't think someone's not posting a what I eat in a day to be harmful. I mean, obviously, they're like, they don't see anything wrong with it. Because if they did, they wouldn't be posting it. 
but I think especially because I feel like on TikTok, since there's such a wide range of ages, I mean, I've seen like nine year olds on TikTok, these children, they're getting affected and they're so young and so impressionable, but I don't think anyone really thinks about it that way. Yeah. And I think people that might not be thinking about food in that way, they don't think about it. And they're just like, well, this is what I eat in a day. Like, what's the problem? But I think it's you're preaching and showing your content to such a wide audience and it there are very impressionable teens and like like I said our relationship with food it's just it falls on this very very broad spectrum and everybody's going to relate to it in some way whether it's in a positive way or in a negative way so and I feel like the negative way it can be very very difficult for somebody and here's the thing about social media you'll never be able to control it it's not it's not control like it's not controlled content like you from our side, like what we're seeing is just like what the other person wants us to see. And unfortunately, with what I eat in the days, they've gained so much traction, and there's not really anything we could do. We can't ban them. We can't cause them to go away. But on your ends, you can you can mute them, you can say you're not interested. And that's what I do. I just, for me, personally, it just it just makes me compare more. Or in general, I would say if any account is making you feel bad about yourself or you notice yourself comparing yourself to the person yeah. mm-hmm. or how many followers that person has, you can mm-hmm. also just like unfollow them. Absolutely. Yeah. And there is nothing wrong with that. Even if they're a close friend, I've, I've yeah. done that before. Me I mean, too. I, you can still have respect and love somebody, but you still don't have to harm yourself in the process and feel worse about yourself. That's, you know, doesn't work that way, you know? I think, honestly, it's just about what is best for you and your health overall. Mm -hmm. So if some account is making you feel bad about yourself or making you question what you're eating, should I be eating this? Am I eating enough? Mm -hmm. Am I eating too much? Just unfollow them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, and honestly, a lot of the times, like these creators, they're not dietitians. They, They have no credentials to even be preaching a diet or what they're eating I think it's just people love to think that they have that kind of platform when they don't so true everyone claims to be an expert but they're not yeah (laughs) on your social media you post lots of videos pictures of these foods that look like desserts they Mm -hmm. you would assume they're not very healthy because obviously Mm -hmm. it's a dessert but you take a more healthy spin on that. How do you like come up with recipes? Did you always like, was this always the focus of your social media? Yeah, it kind of, once I started to get into my page more is when I started creating recipes, you know, a lot in the food community, someone will try something and then everybody tries it. So there are like trends. Um, And usually I'll try to like credit that person if I do their recipe or whatever. But then I started to like, really take a step back and think about, you know, when I was little, I ate everything and I love desserts. Like I have a sweet tooth. Even to this day, the only savory thing I really eat is avocado toast. (laughs) Everything is sweet. I have oatmeal, pancakes, like everything is sugar centric. So I wanted to like take that and sort of like make it into a healthier way because it honestly is really difficult to use some of these really healthy ingredients. So I kind of saw it as a challenge. I was like, how can I make this like, you know, really healthy and clean and dairy free. And I also know that like, from an allergen perspective, a lot of people are gluten free and dairy free and trying to not consume so much sugar. And also from the other end of the spectrum is like, I think it's really important to have balance. So people will see my recipes and maybe think that I eat this way all the time and I eat really healthy. But like last night I went out for Italian food and I had white bread with, you know, like I think that it's all about balance. And in my day-to-day life, I do enjoy, it makes me feel good. I know everybody says that, but eating healthier and just like eating more plant-based whole foods makes me feel good. makes me feel my best. But what also makes me feel my best is incorporating in some of those other kinds of foods that I know and love, like pastries and croissants and pizza, stuff like that. And I think that's why I sort of call my page The Balanced Bite, because it really is a balance. And even in my healthier recipes, I do include things that might not, like I do include sugar sometimes, you know, I switch it up. Um, but I do love the the creative aspect of being able to make a Pop-Tart out of oatmeal, like I think that there's things like that, that it's like a challenge to me. It's like, can I actually do this? Can I make this work? You know? 
Yeah, because I mean, I was scrolling through your Instagram the other day and reading mm-hmm. some of the ingredients, and I was totally shocked because I would say I'm a fairly healthy person. I mean, obviously not all the time. I mean, I had a burger last night, but I'm not someone who's just going to eat horrible all the time. Like, as you were saying, I feel better when I eat better, but in your mind, would you say a balanced diet, is it more about eating healthy all the time, eating like what you want or like kind of a mix in between? I think like my healthiest diet, and I think maybe a lot of people can relate to this is like, what you just like connecting to yourself? Like, what do I really want right now? Do I want an oatmeal pop tart? Or do I want a real pop tart? Do I want pizza? Or do I want a salad? And I know that that's sort of like the food freedom, intuitive eating trends that's going on right now which is amazing. Like if you can eat intuitively, I think it's very admirable, but I will preface it with the fact that it's a very hard thing to do. Like I said, it's, you know, your diet is affected by so many different things. I think sometimes it's hard to dial in with what you really want. Um, In a perfect world, again, that'd be great to just like wake up and know exactly what you want for breakfast, be able to eat it, no problems. But I think getting to that point, it it takes work. And I think for me, when I started creating some of these healthier desserts, it was allowing me to have these foods fit more. Because honestly, I don't want to eat a Pop-Tart or a cinnamon roll every single day. But I always want dessert. So it's like, maybe on Sunday, I do go out and get a cinnamon roll. But then maybe on Wednesday, I'm like, I kind of want to have that cinnamon roll again. But like, can I make it a little bit healthier so that like I can switch it up and try something new? So that's often how I like spark a lot of my creativity. Like, you know, last week I was in a bakery or a coffee shop and I saw those like cinnamon twists with icing. And I was like, I used to love those. Like, can I try to make that out of oatmeal? So that's sort of how I like to start to incorporate that like balance a little bit. And just, again, it's like a challenge. It's a creative aspect for sure. I think the intuitive eating is a really good point because I mean, some days all I want is a burger or maybe all I want is salad, like for dinner. And I think listening to your body is really important and what you actually want. So I think that's a good point. Cause I, I mean, I didn't know there was a name for that. I just yeah. thought it was a thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like it's sort of turned into another kind of, not a fad, but a trend. And I think it is one of those trends that can be very unrealistic to get to the point. I know that like for me right now, I'm thinking about breakfast. I'm like, I don't know what I want. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's really hard to dial in with yourself that much, especially because a lot of people do come from some sort of relationship with food that isn't like a clean slate. Everybody's affected. Their relationship with food is affected every single day. So getting to just like this perfect intuitive eating, I listen to my body sort of mindset, it can be challenging. It's not perfect by any means. But then that's also part of it. Eating isn't perfect. And it's not supposed to be perfect. And I think we sort of have to like debunk that idea where all these influencers and fitness lifestyle girls and guys are just like preaching a perfect relationship with food. But really, your best relationship with food is not perfect. It will never be perfect. It's supposed to be just a thing that happens in life. And life isn't perfect. So that's sort of how I I look at it now. I think that's a really good point. Because especially on social media, we're seeing what these people are posting. Or especially on Instagram stories, when people will post if they're going to some fancy restaurant, but they'll just take a picture of like a salad or something. (laughs) You're like, oh, they're eating salad. And then you're looking at where you're eating and you're like, oh, crap, I should have had a salad today. But like, again, it goes back to the point where we all have different bodies. We all need to eat different things. And I mean, if you see something on social media, you don't know what this person had like the rest of the day or what they normally eat. They could just be eating this for like Instagram or just to make the what I eat in a day video. You don't know. Exactly. You'll never. And that's the thing. It's a guessing game. And you're you're behind a screen. The other person's behind a screen. It's carefully curated content. It's like assuming like we can't Mm -hmm. just assume. So if you're going to do that comparison game, you just have to like mute it. You got to like turn it off and get it out of your phone. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I've definitely agreed that comparison is probably one of the biggest things, especially for kids my age or probably people around your age too, but because we all grew up around social media or especially right now being a teenager with social media, it just, it honestly sucks (laughs) because you're just seeing 
all these people doing all these things and you get to see what all your friends are doing on yeah. snapchat on instagram on tiktok mm -hmm. and then you're just like i've been in my room all day i've only all had day. chips uh mm -hmm. what am i doing with my life and it just <laughs> feels like comparison right and it's so toxic it's so incredibly toxic but it's so easy to do and then we beat ourselves up for comparing we're like why did you compare yourself to that person but then you're like wait a second like this happens to everybody how could i not compare this healthy salad to my bag of chips like obviously that's normal so it's just about getting rid of the content honestly <laughs> i i totally agree just unfollow click not yeah. interested yep. mm -hmm. whatever you have to do whatever not you have to do to see it definitely yeah you've seen the faux freckle trend popping up all over your socials right pseudo labs has absolutely perfected the most natural looking faux freckle cosmetic around just in time for summer freckles is a vegan hypoallergenic gluten-free cruelty-free and water resistant faux freckle cosmetic that accentuates and highlights the natural beauty of the face this is great for enhancing the freckles you already have or adding extra for a dimensional makeup look get that sun-kissed glow we all love without any risk of sun damage with three shades it's easy to find the perfect match for you the unique application method perfects the most natural looking faux freckles possible all you need to do is shake the bottle, hold the bristles parallel to your face, and sweep the pig applicator through the bristles to flick on each freckle perfectly. Tap out the pigment to blend into your skin, and you are ready to glow this summer. Pseudolabs offers a collective of unique, original, and universal cosmetics derived from science. Get the trend that keeps popping up for summer 2021 with code GIRLYGIRL for 10% off your next purchase. On your Instagram... You have so many different desserts. Would you say like the majority of it are is, like your own recipes or is it following food trends or mostly like a pretty even mixture of both? I think it's a pretty even mixture. Um, like, for example, I do know that oatmeal and baked oats, everything with oatmeal is trending right now. So I sort of like, you know, hopped on that bandwagon a lot already. I love oatmeal so much, so it wasn't very hard to do. Um and then like, you know, the other end is like when I started my microwave cookie sort of <laughs> obsession, which is what a lot of people really like on my page, there were people already doing it. So like it wasn't like I woke up one day and was like, I want to do microwave cookie. I just like yeah. liked the idea, but I, I love chocolate chip cookies, but I wanted to like dabble in really we like crazy cookies, like a Samoa and like the Girl Scout cookies and a chocolate stuffed cookie, like just different kinds of ones. So it's like, you can sort of spark creativity from what you're seeing online. And I think that it's really cool to be inspired. But at the same time, sometimes I'll wake up and be like, can I make a cinnamon twist? Can I make a cinnamon roll in the microwave with just oatmeal and yogurt or oatmeal and banana? Like, so things like that that come up. So I'd say it's a, a pretty even mix. And I think other food creators and wellness creators, like they they will feel the same way probably. I have never been someone who is good at baking I love baking. I think it's great. I love making dessert. And I just always thought like looking at your Instagram, I was so intrigued when I saw it. First of all, the pictures were just amazing. And then oh, the recipes, I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? And then also, what do you think is or could be since you make a lot of desserts healthier what is probably like an easy swap someone could make maybe when baking or just in food in general when I first started to get into like healthier baking I was always on the lookout for these swaps or just you know a, a different way to to implement some other ingredients and the biggest things I see is for sweetener um I love using bananas I love using like mashed bananas for anything it can honestly be the equivalent of like a banana bread, you know, it, it makes it very, it can make it naturally sweet. It can add some potassium, like things like that, that are cool. Um, I also love like maple syrup and baking with like more cleaner sugars rather than just a pure white sugar. I love coconut sugar, um, stevia and monk fruit. I do in very small uh, portions just cause I know that it can sort of have some digestive discomfort issues. Um, but that's also an option. Um, in terms of flour, which is when I have like my most fun, I, there's so many flowers. Like I just tried tiger nut flour for the first time the other day. And I was like, this is like the consistency of white flour. It's wild how it works. It's very weird. And 
it's honestly very inspiring, but that's when I started using um, oatmeal more as a flour. So I'd say that's my number one swap. So oat flour, you can literally make from blending rolled oats, quick oats, anything. And it works. It works great. Like I maybe have to add an extra quarter of a cup to, to make it like the same ratio as if I were baking with regular like white flour, but it works amazing and it holds together. And it's just like a great, healthier alternative, especially for people who don't like just like oatmeal. Like a lot of people don't love the consistency. A lot of people don't really crave it, you know, so it's a cool way to use it in a, in a different and unique fun way. I don't know. I mean, it's one of my favorite healthy swaps for sure. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because I, I would say I don't know if I've ever just craved oatmeal. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I, it's cool how different things they can have the same texture, but it's mm-hmm. so much better for you. Right. And then it just makes you think like, why haven't I been doing this the mm-hmm. whole time? In general, who would you say was your biggest influence on food? On if there was like a creator or a parent, a family member, who do you think you really kind of wanted to follow in their footsteps or something like that? Um, honestly, like my parents both like grew up with food so much, but I'd have to say, you know, growing up with my dad and, you know, seeing how his eating habits were, it was like very inspiring to me. And I know that he said he wanted to listen to this podcast, so this one's for him on Father's Day. But he really did, you know, he has a very balanced and I think very healthy relationship with food. He does eat all of the things that I grew up eating, which would be, you know, cereal and Pop-Tarts and pastries. He eats all those things, but he also loves fruit. He loves trying different things. And like, I think that it's very cool to see his relationship with food, how it's very simple. He will have a big meal at night. And maybe he'll have breakfast a little bit later in the morning because he's not as hungry or vice versa. He's very intuitive with when he's hungry. And I think it's very admirable. And I think when I grew up in that environment, when it was very, you eat when you're hungry, you stop when you're like, it was very nice to have that behavior. Um, And I think that influenced me a lot. And it's always one of my driving points to get back to a healthier relationship with food is being more intuitive and seeing that, you know, my dad eats what he wants and what he's craving and at what time he wants. And I think that's very admirable and a a good place to get back to for sure. Um, In terms of like health and wellness creators, I'd say that all of them influenced me at some point. I have some favorites on the app for sure. Um, One of my favorite influencers um, that speaks a lot to like body positivity. um, Her name's Kate Noel. She's incredible. She is actually a, she was a model and she still does modeling, but she went through recovery and, you know, when I was going through it, she was just like, I was watching her YouTube videos and she just is so well-versed and she knows what to say. And it's just like a very warming environment to see somebody so transparent online. Um, and she, she's just incredible. Um, and then in terms of food creators, they all influence me. Um, I love Trace, Trace Oats or whatever on TikTok. He's the one who like makes oh my gosh. so many baked oats. I love He's him. my favorite. Yeah. Um, I had a moment, he followed me the other day and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. He's so, so cool. And I think that that's when people started to see oatmeal as like a really cool, healthy swap. And that's honestly, he inspires me a lot too with some of his amazing recipes and cool baked oats. And I love that so much. I feel like it's so surreal when someone follows you. I kind of forget that they're real people. Yeah. Um, Right. Like, I'm like, oh my God. You're like, oh my gosh, you want to follow me? You want to yeah. talk to me? You're like, oh, that's so cool. It was cool. so funny. Yeah. I texted it to my friend because we've been watching his videos for literally since he started. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> and speaking about um, growing up in a household, it seems like your family had a pretty healthy relationship with food. But what would you say would be helpful for someone who maybe their parents don't eat very healthy And it's not like they're in charge of what's for dinner and maybe they're too young to drive and go get food. What would you say would help them to eat healthier or to make better food choices? Yeah, I think that can be very, very challenging. I will preface it with that, that that takes a whole nother level of strength. Um, I think having an open conversation, if that's an option for you with your parents, is a good start to say, hey, like you guys can maybe continue eating 
however you want to eat, but like maybe can we get some strawberries? Can we, just like small little things because I think that everything makes a difference. So maybe instead of having some Sour Patch Kids, which honestly are great and I love them anyways, but maybe you buy some fresh fruit or just like making those kinds of swaps and not even swaps, but just adding them in if it's an option and having that open conversation. If it's not, I'd say engaging in, you know, a healthier form of exercise. If you're able, like, you know, going for a light walk, something like that, that maybe you're more in charge of is, is really nice. And then my favorite thing to do is hydrate. Like we're all in charge of our water intake. That's a great healthier thing. I think being healthy is such a spectrum that, you know, when you go to a parent and you say that you want to be healthy, the first thing they think is that they want to go on a diet, but that is not it. It's like, Maybe I just want to have a peach today or, you know, not have soda or something like that. And I think that at that point, you have to sort of evaluate what your environment is when you're growing up and see what your your means are to change it and and how you can bring in different healthier foods and healthier staples. And even if that means making oat flour and making a pop tart, like just little things, there are so many ways to be healthy and to implement healthy alternatives that it's, you know, there's a lot of options. I like how you brought up that you can be healthy, not just by eating healthy, but working out, drinking Mm -hmm. water. It's just goes to show that it's not just about one specific thing. You kind of have to focus Mm -hmm. on it more holistically. And especially when you don't have control over the entire situation, you need to focus on what you can change whether that is the food you're eating or how much exercise you're getting or how much water you're drinking. And I think that's just a really good point and kind of shifting your perspective to that. It was so nice talking to you. Yeah, you too. I mean, any excuse to talk about healthy desserts, I'm all in. (laughs) Of course. And so where can my listeners find your content? Just you can go tell everybody and it'll also be linked down below for everyone. Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm the balanced underscore bite. Um, and my name is Alexa on there. And then on TikTok, I'm afternoon snack um, because it's just a funny name and I kind of like it. Um, but yeah, you can find all my recipes on there. I'm looking to hopefully within the next couple months do an ebook of some sorts with some fun recipes and like microwave desserts and I'm super excited for that so stay tuned oh my gosh I'm excited for you I'll definitely yeah, check I'm that like, out when you do it people keep saying they're like can you please make a book with all of your microwave recipes I'm like I guess I'll try <laughs> that'll be so awesome well thank you so much for coming on and as always all of my links are down below and definitely check out Alexa. She has so many great things and you guys are going to love all of her content. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.